me in the spotlight, losing my religion or something. Hello and welcome to the stream. Uh, today's pre-stream chatter was me um, doing a fairly accurate but very poor toned uh, version of Losing My Religion by R.E.M. So I think you could guess from what's on the uh, browser tab here what we're going to be looking at today. That's right, Maxima. Maxima is a wonderful program, apparently, that actually does a lot of what Mathematica does, but has the big advantage of being open source and free. Um, it wasn't originally, but apparently, if you read this, which I'm not going to because I can't read, um, if you read that, it does say that it is now open source and free. Um, so we're going to try to, uh, and what we're going to be using is we need some, you know, we need, we need obviously like a little mini project to test uh, Maxima with. By the way, this is Maxima spelled like this, M-A-X-I-M-A. -A -A. Uh, the original one is spelled like this, M-A-C-S-Y-M-A. -A. And I actually did use the original Maxima uh, way back in the day, um, probably in the early 80s, maybe even the late 70s. Um, and and it wasn't as good as Mathematica at the time. And I'm, I, to be honest, I don't know if this Maxima is as good as Mathematica, but really the advantage of being open source, which I hope Mathematica will move to that, but they probably won't, uh, is a huge, huge, uh, and being free to everyone is a huge, huge benefit that I'm willing to uh, you know give up a little bit of what Mathematica has, maybe uh, based on what we're, what we look at today. Um, so the data we're going to be using sort of as our test data is the data on this guy, whose name, of course, is Bob. Uh, now, this is like Bob is the guy who like posed for the coronavirus picture. Now, obviously, I don't want to be racist or anything, but they kind of all look alike to me. Um, but this is the this is the reference photo for the coronavirus. And um, before anyone dings me, not that there's anyone here, uh, but before anyone dings me and says, this isn't a picture of the coronavirus, that's correct. This is a model of the coronavirus. It is not an actual picture of the picture. Uh, it'd be cool if the coronavirus looked like this. It was all colored and had little fluffy things on it and stuff. But no, this is a representation of the coronavirus in a molecular diagram. Um, that And the, the shiny colors have been added to, to make it more visually appealing and make it easier to see what the... Uh, what the individual, I have no idea what these, these things are, uh, but no, this is not a picture of the coronavirus. Okay, so previously on stream, we had gotten to BC test one, where we were sort of looking at the COVID. I think I even created a BC, no, I did not. I had created a BC COVID, I think, for um, Wolfram script. That's what I did, yeah, uh, but not for, uh, not for Maxima. It is Pomodoro time, and it's the first one, so we will skip it. Okay. So we might as well write this data directly into BC COVID dot, I guess the, uh, the tradition is to call these things dot Mac files. Um, yeah, because this one's called dot Mac. Okay, so we'll do this. This is the uh, total, we'll call this, um, I want to call it global deaths. Now, the only thing that's missing here is we don't, we need a number for yesterday. Uh, NZ are the nosy deaths, which is obviously we don't get it by uh, just, hand editing this we need to do this better so the rest of the stuff here we actually do need to do a little bit better um, but let's see if we can get the uh, the file that gave me so much trouble yesterday that tells you um, how many uh, people have died from the coronavirus and it is why do I have a fake unicorn oh just in case you wanted to know that why why did I oh that wow this stuff is pretty old um fact, I wondered if I went to the wrong place. Let's do this again. Yeah, here we go. I was actually in the other, uh, the other, the older version of, the unmounted version of downloads, which was interesting. Uh, so the last version we had was from uh, yesterday, uh, and we're just using the world data. <coughs> Covered my cough, you're fine. And now we need, ah. Now, I'm going to go ahead and look at the whole thing because it's possible they edited, they retroactively edited the data to be more accurate, and there's nothing wrong with that. Now, I'm hoping to hell we could find out, maybe this time I actually wrote down where the hell I found this data because it was a pain in the ass to find yesterday. Um, uh, okay, we're going to say I'm not going to do that, actually, because I think we're going to, unless Maxima proves to be in... Um, insufficient for my purposes um, I will be I will be using uh, Maxima instead okay so now let's see if we can find the freaking data 
which I don't know how other people are finding this so easy. Um, something, something funky. I, I think they're cheating somehow. Uh, no, not the COFID, which is another totally um, uh, provisional death counts. Uh, Centers for Disease Control. Uh, CSV4. So this is again. This is probably not the data I need, unfortunately. A lot of this data is, is it's good data in the sense that it's uh, correctly broken up into various different categories, but that's not what I'm looking for. What I'm looking for is the, for right now at least, is the, is the, the total world data, um, which God only knows how, where that hell that is. I found it yesterday, um, and in fact, I thought I was going to write down where I found it, um, but actually I might, oh, let's see. COVID cases for the rest. Okay, no. It basically it's total deaths COVID nineteen. Um, that's the file name. Um, so maybe I can actually use my history um, and see if I can find the. That's the search. Uh, I'm. I think that's where I need to be. So what I'm going to do here? Okay, something tells me this is not what I need because I don't have it bookmarked. Oh, Jesus Christ. Um, so the, the issue here is, let me, let me take a look at the view source here. There's a CSV file I need, there's none in here. So, and for some reason, I don't know why my history is not picking, it should actually be able to pick up the, the file that I downloaded. Um, confirmed, yeah, that's just right now that I did it. Um, So, I guess I could go over here to downloads, huh, if I'm clever, because that's what I did with it, I downloaded the data. So let's take a look at my um, downloads. Uh, view, I want to view. Nope, I want to view two bars, sidebar, zoom, page, what the hell do I want to view? I want to view my downloads. Um, there we are. Aha! Uh, recovered, confirmed. Deaths, this is not the one I want though. Um, unless it is the one I want. Now, there's, there's something else that I think I want. Um, okay. This might be, hang on. This is the first time I've ever actually used this, whatever the hell this is, on Juta. Okay, that's probably not what I want, though. Go screw that. Time series death. So the file, the problem is the file I'm looking for, um, I know its exact name. It is total deaths COVID-19. This is, this is the name, and the one is only there because I have two copies of it. So let's go ahead and put this up here. And when I find it, but I mean, I found it. Um... So no one's trying to talk to me, which is fairly normal. Um, oh, oh, download this part of the library. Okay. So it's not this one. Not this one. The thing is, it would be the last thing I downloaded. So uh, Okay, I can't get any more information on that either. Provisional death counts. The only thing I can think of is this is the file. What the hell? I just wanted to re-download it because it's changed. Um, go to download page. That is... Copy download link. Well, let's see you beat that, Mr. Smarty Pants. Okay, this maybe will do what I want. I get the feeling it won't. God damn it. Yeah, that's a fun thing to, that's a fun URL to have there. Okay, let's see if we got the, nope. Um, it did not get me the total deaths COVID CSV. So hang on, I downloaded it at 1656 yesterday. Uh, that's probably Greenwich Mean 
time. I th it's got to be because everything here is Greenwich. All right, so now let's take a look at the history again. So maybe we can, we will find this piece of shit. Um, yesterday. Um, I want the time. Um, sixteen fifty six would be four fifty six p.m. Um, and the latest thing I did was this data here, and I think that's probably it. This is the impossible to find page. Um, this probably should say 11th, huh? Because um, at some point I'm just going to get rid of the date and say, you know, whatever the fuck I want. Okay. Now, in theory, I could use Maxima to read the whole CSV and get me the data I want. I'm not going to be quite that anally retentive about this. I am going to go ahead and... Um, well, it is. It is. Let's go ahead and add this uh, CSV data COVID-19. I know that you're not supposed to do it this way. I don't care. All right. So, let's see. Daily new confirmed... So, cases and deaths... I don't think that's got it's really confirmed deaths. This is where I want. I sound very grisly when I say that, doesn't it? Confirmed COVID deaths from the 22nd. Data. So were there, did no one actually die before then? There it is. Okay, hang on. Oh wow, it is actually, uh, it actually has a bizarre name. Okay, let me see, what is this, um, copy link location. Let's get busy with this stuff. Is direct, oh wow, link location, maybe. Because they might change it every day. But anyway, now that we have the data and it is now going to be called something. Time, nope, nope, nope. Oh, come on. Why is it called Kenjda? This is what I want, but... Right. Let me try downloading it the normal way. I guess if you try to open it in another link, something weird happens. There it is, the correct way. <sighs> that took forever. And I guess I'm going to move this out of the way. No one ever talks to me, but if they do... Um, I want to be able to see it. Um, not that they will. Okay. So this is just going to do, I think we actually have the command to get this data, um, get this data into a near Mathematica format. It's actually going to be not quite where we need it to be, but, all right. And I think that command there was, um, that one I do have, um, world. There we are. Except now it's going to be for the second, for copy number three, which is named two. Because the first copy doesn't get a parenthetical name. Which I'm okay with. I'm totally cool with that. Okay, let's do that. And then, you know, there's a ton of ways we could do this. The easiest way is just to edit this file by hand. Yep. Uh, let's we'll call it deaths. And I guess we're just going to use, since we're going to use um, Maxim anyway, we might as well just put it in the Maximo format right away. And so this, we can just do a, nope, we can't do that. Do this, do this. Um, oh, wow. BC COVID. W, no, 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 Mac. So... Now, you know, I'm not going to be too picky about this, but it appears that the number of deaths yesterday went down by five. So if you're worried about a zombie apocalypse, this data suggests, although that's the only one that they corrected, that maybe there's five people who died and came back somehow. Or more likely, um, just a correction to the data. Let's not be too silly. Okay. So now we can do 
the magic command of the day, which we need to change slightly because we're now doing that's what I wanted. Um, the R maximal command. We're going to change it slightly because number one, I'm getting sick of this uh, there. Uh, because we want to, we're using a different. Um, we're using a different file, and the file we're using is called BC COVID. I'm not even putting the 19 on it because I, I feel part of the problem is people are paying too much attention to COVID, um, and I think by insulting a little bit, maybe it'll get go away because it's like a bully, uh, a very small bully. COVID-19, you're acting like you're COVID-5. Okay. little insult there to the COVID virus. Okay, so this really is going to do nothing interesting at all. Well, I was kind of hoping we'd do something more interesting than that. Abort! Abort! Oh, wow. Abort some more. Abort! 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 Abort. I could probably get out of this just by killing our maxima, but what the hell did I do? All right, screw this. Okay, so our maxima. Wait, oh yeah, I probably need to be in an actual directory when I remount. So that was fun. Okay, what? Oh. This time, it's for the much simpler reason that I forgot to put a semicolon here. All right. Are there? Oh, wow. I need to kill that suspended job. Um, I also need to kill X Planet. I don't know why the hell that was running. Um, I, it, by the way, the, the background is actually the Earth. Uh, so it was. I know it was running. I just forgot to kill it. So now, 900 times the charm. Okay. So now if we say deaths semicolon we get but that's not very exciting now what we're looking for now is uh, I mean we could plot this we could do all sorts of exciting things with this but let's actually now look at the number of new deaths per day instead of the cumulative deaths so that's a very simple function that we basically are going to take the differences of this list Mathematica calls it differences Maxima calls it I don't know what it calls it because I haven't looked yet but uh, this appears to be the Maxima manual I have stored it locally, but I don't know if I... Well, have I stored it locally? I must have done. Yeah, I did. Um, ugh, and I was going to say, I don't want to use the local copy, but actually I do want to use the local copy. Uh, try to be uh, as nice about resources as possible when I want to be, and when I don't want to be, I can be very nasty with resources. But in this case, I am actually... Um, I actually do want to be nice with resources. I think that should, yeah, that should automate the background. So, okay, cool. So the the we're going to sort of learn maxima uh, or not learn maxima uh, by just doing the things we need to do to sort of get an idea to, to play around with the COVID virus data, which is different from playing around with the COVID virus itself. So what we're looking for now is a function that operates on lists and yields the list of differences. Of list that sounds very strange. I don't think there's a built-in. Uh, there's a built-in function that does this. There isn't in Mathematica. It's called differences, uh, but that's that's not going to be here. So what we're looking for now is mathematical functions. Um, what we're really looking for are list functions that operate on lists. So Mathematica would call these list functions. Um, but let's look at some mathematical functions, okay? For, okay, so these are not, these look like they're functions in the more traditional sense that they don't operate on lists. So let's go to data types and structures. Uh, numbers, strings, con lists. Let's do lists. Um, introduction to lists, okay. Um, See, so now again, I'm not really crazy about them saying what the form is in lists because I'm trying to do m maxima. Um, okay, so this is actually probably better. So it's bracket, it's a bunch of things. Oh, God. Why are you telling me what this is in Lisp? Okay. Um, okay, also mark the subscript, hash array, or memoizing function. Um, ooh, other than for arrays, accessing the nth element of a r list may require going through the list. In other words, it takes O of N. 
I don't even know if they had big O notation back then. They, they must have. Okay. So this is assigning to a list. Um, uh, that's interesting. So somehow the array command is different from just creating a list like this. We were not going to worry about that optimization right now because our list is you know, fairly small and we're not we're not having any problems with time. Um, Zifu. Okay, I guess what they're showing here is you can actually have little tick marks as your. Um, oh, oh, actually, that's sort of clever. Your that means you can use uh, this is a this is a hashed array. I, this is a associative hash. So, in theory, and I'm going to regret this. You should be able to say color of lime is green. Now, whether or not it's going to work. Okay, so that may be just telling me that I did it, but now let's see what color looks like. Okay, let's see what color of lime looks like. Nice. Um, what wasn't nice, though, is when I just typed color by itself. So that's now actually a color of cherry. She's my, not my cherry pie, or she could be my cherry pie. Cherry uh, pie, th th which is red. Now, will this tell me everything I need to know about color? It will not. What about this? No, because that is a different thing. Okay, so I, so this is the thing we've learned now is you can actually have associative arrays um, in in Maxima. I don't know how to get things from it. Maybe I could do keys colors. And again, now I'm actually doing what, what's really bad because I really should be learning about this instead of trying to find functions. So colors I've now assigned, so I should be able to say colors line. Ooh. Oh, did I say, was it color lime? And color cherry. And now, this should fail, but in, in a non-fatal way. Color sub lemon. So that sort of means undefined. I don't like the way they do subscripts, but I mean, it's technically okay. Because of something called currying, you can write f of x is either f the standard way or f subscript x. And when you have functions of multiple variables, uh, that can be useful. Okay, it is Pomodoro time. I will be back in two and two. And we're almost back. Um, and we're back. Okay. So we got an associative array that we don't need, but we know how to use one. Let's see what else there are, is. Okay. Now this is kind of cool. You can assign, in this case we're using colon equal, not colon. Uh, you can assign an array as a function, which is very useful. Um, so you could say, this is not a very great function, but, okay. 
And there you have, it's a very simple function, but it does work. Again, I do not care for this notation. It is technically correct because it is, um, but it's ugly. Okay, so we can run do functions, we can do... I don't know why they're doing this. Though. This Is this like, I think, I think a single tick back in the olden days, and actually still obviously maxima, means a quoted string. So for example, if I did color lemon yellow, this would actually assign semicolon. This would actually assign lemon, color of lemon, if I did it more traditionally like this, to yellow. And it doesn't. Okay, not cool. Okay, so now what if I do this? You can have pink lemonade. It works. Uh, so now if I do color of lemon, we get yellow, but color of... Okay, so these are apparently separate somehow. Um, we maybe need to look into that at some point. Okay, and you could assign it to... Um, Okay, good stuff. <coughs> now this is interesting because you're assigning here without doing a colon. You're basically saying array r fix num 17. So if we want r5, I'm going to guess that's going to be not, that's not what I wanted. Hang on, I did something wrong. Oh, the last one's the size, sorry. Array full of 17s, that is, I, I'm guessing you have to put a real number here, otherwise it's going to get unhappy. Uh, so now if I say array of 4, <whistles> oh wait, oh no, no, that, those are both dimensions, okay, hang on. So this, how do I do, that's magic. Um, then you can assign to it, but... Okay. I'm a little confused now. What does this do? Okay. If I evaluate it, I guess, okay. So now I can say array 3 is equal to 10. And then, I know this is stupid, I'm just assigning it and getting it back. Array 2 is 0, array 3 is 10. Array 4, if array 5, maybe now this will tell me, yep, oh, so I don't know what, I still don't know why I need the fixed number, it apparently just says you're calling a one-dimensional array now, but why can't I just do this, now this is going to break, and this is where it's going to go all hazy, can I do this, okay, so now we need, the mystery here is why they have the word fixed num here, but let's read on. Or actually, I guess we don't get to read on. That's that's the examples, and now we get the functions. Append, okay. Um, hello, Milkister Moo, and welcome. Thank you for calling me Barry. I'm totally okay with it now. So basically, every time you say something that offends me, just wait till the next time, and I'll be totally over it. What are you studying, Mr. Milkister Moo? Are you studying the wonderful world of Maxima, which is a program that is so old? Um... Well, uh, it's not older than I am, but it's pretty damn old. Um, and yet, it's still very useful. I think it may be one, one of those things that they call a hidden gem, or a hidden germ, because we are talking about COVID, and while technically viruses aren't germs, people are pretty sloppy in terms of language, so there could be like a little bit of a combination thing going on there. Okay, so while I wait for you to answer, we will say, uh, here we are. Differential, it's not bad. That's actually some pretty cool stuff. And Maximal will do, I think, will do def differential equations. I mean, I'm right now at the portion of Mathematica where it does lists, which are not that difficult. But um, the DFQ is pretty cool. Uh, and I think Maximal will do it. Um, I think Maximal might have gotten overshadowed by Mathematica. Because Mathematica is better, but it's not free. But a lot of people can get it for free or very cheap because if they're affiliated with a university. So I could probably do that too. Oh, I do have it. Never mind. The problem is my work cannot be replicated by people who don't have it, and I don't want that. Okay. Um, the soak function searches for x. 
Okay, I don't know what that does. I don't think we need it, so I'm going to ignore that. Cons is, by the way, a very, very old um, list concept. It adds an element to a list. Um, yeah, it's the list of cons. Good, we don't need it right now. Copy list, so that's okay. Create list. Um, okay, that's actually pretty cool. That's like the table function in Mathematica. Um, yes, but I'm not going to recommend people do that. Remember, my goal here is to let other people do what I'm doing and without necessarily, um, without necessarily breaking the law, but honestly also, I think our goal should be to um, mimic or exceed commercial software, not just steal it. Uh, but I'm not offended, so you can't say anything about that. So create list is like the table. It basically creates a list. It, with a so delete, okay. Um, okay, delete something from a list. Again, not, it's good stuff, not what I need right now, wow. Okay. Now, you have to kind of wonder why they have a very specific function to get the eighth element of a list. Apparently, they also have first, second, third, blah, blah, blah. But that's stupid. Okay. End cons. So that's a flip. That's cons, but you flip it. Fifth. Again, first. First actually has some value, because first is a special kind of an element. But these other ones are sort of stupid. First end, part. Um, that's actually not bad either. Um, the first n elements of a list. Good deal. Um, that's not the reason, though. That's not the reasoning there. You're correct, um, except you're not necessarily correct. Um, if you were never going to buy it and only use it for free, you could argue that... Um, I I would I would very very close to agreeing with you. Mathematica is the only piece of commercial software I can sort of recommend, and it it's been around for a really really long time, uh, and they've been working on it since you know back in the back in the days of DOS MS DOS, um, and and they've done a lot of work on it. I do wish they would release it to open source, but but they have chosen not to do that. Um, now th there's sort of a there's sort of a, f a soft argument here that. Uh, if you're not going to, you know, if you weren't going to buy it, but what if it was required for your co coursework somewhere, then you would have had to buy it. Um, and the question is, you know, um, if you're not going to buy it, why do, you, why do you use it? Why not use something that, you know, you wouldn't have to buy? There's sort of a soft argument there that, yeah, maybe you wouldn't have bought it anyway, but, you know, then in, w in that case, why bother why bother to use the free version? I mean, why, why, why bother to steal it? I mean, why steal something that you, you know, if it's not that valuable to pay for it, it's not that valuable, it's not valuable enough to, to steal, is what I would say. Fourth, join. Okay. Well, that's kind of cool. Last. Last is another useful one. Uh, that is not like a silly one. Last n, give me last n elements, that's good stuff. Um, length, length of a list, very good. List arith, oh, that's an uh, option value. Um, list p, which Mathematica would call this list q, determine if something is a list. Extends the binary function to an f to a unary where s is a list. Jesus Christ. Oh, oh, this is like what Mathematica would call fold. I wonder if anyone, if someone actually does have a, a, a conversion on these things. Um, so let's see. Let me see if I can find where um, there is a place where L reduce and fold, it'll tell you that these are the same thing. Um, L, and I think I actually, no, I want L reduce specifically. And uh, it actually does fail because um, 
the, the point is, if you really could use that open source software instead, why aren't you using it in the first place? It's more convenient. N Mathematica is pretty powerful. I don't think even Maxima, which I'm using now, I don't think is as powerful. So you wouldn't. You would think you could use another open source software, but if you actually tried it, if someone actually put you to the test, you would find that you would fail, or the amount of time, you know, the convenience argument isn't like it's a minor convenience. It might be that you would insanely have to actually write a ton of code in that other open source software to get wh what you wanted. Um, and again, my, my, my feeling is that we should not um, go pro-piracy. We should more go, uh, let's just use open source software so the market for commercial software goes away. Uh, that's a better solution. Yeah, I mean, no, there's plenty. Okay, if you want to justify piracy, um, oh, brother. Uh, if you want to justify TV and radio piracy, that's pretty easy. They broadcast that over the air. It comes into my house. It's mine. Um, you can't you can't say that it's yours if you've given it to me. So you've given it away, not yours. Um, trickier to do with software. They do give out free copies of Mathematica. Uh, you know what they call sample or um, a limited uh, limited uh, time copies of Mathematica. And it turns out you can break them so that they actually keep working forever. Uh, and in this case, you could argue that, you know, um, you never agreed. I mean, you did in the shrink wrap contract, the contract of adhesion, but you could agree that you didn't really ever agree to not hack it to get, you know, to use the, s the sample version so it lasts forever. Now, to justify hacking or pirating Mathematica, it's a, it's a very thin argument. It's not going to work. But um, if you go to a torrent site or anywhere and you download something someone has put up, um, and by, by put up I mean yes, they're stream, you know, they're seeding it or they're sharing it um, by um, by having a piece of it, you could argue that you don't know for a fact that they're that they're hacking. It's quite possible that the guy that they're pirating. You could make the assumption that the person who is who is sharing it has the legal right to share it, because otherwise, they wouldn't be sharing it. Y in other words, you don't know that what they're doing is illegal necessarily. I mean, in theory, it could be Stephen Wolfram out there. It, it probably isn't, by the way, uh, who wants to give away free copies of Mathematica, and he wants to do it in this weird, bizarre back doorway. Um, so that would be the the argument for piracy if you are only consuming piracy, uh, not not giving it away to other people, but rather taking from other people, you could make the argument that it's not your responsibility to determine whether or not somebody else is breaking the law. And that is my argument for saying that if um, companies are going to go after torrenters and stuff, they should be going, and I think they do go after the people who do the sharing, not the people who, who get the sharing. Um, and and there, there are going to be lots of ways to do this at some point. I believe what companies should get smarter about is digital watermarking, uh, invisible digital watermarking, which means basically every copy that you get is a little bit different. So if you share your copy uh, and they see, you know, they could figure out who it is that's doing the sharing. And I also believe, I'm going to go rant on about this now. I also don't believe in contracts of adhesion or sh what I call shrink wrap contracts because no one really reads them. In fact, if you've ever actually tried to read one, I did try to read one at a store once and the clerk was like, oh, it doesn't say anything, just sign it. Um, which technically, you know, he could have gotten in trouble for. Uh, but I mean, obviously no one actually does that. So what I'm saying is that if, um, uh, you know, I think companies have a responsibility to explain the contract that you're signing, including especially, you know, and okay. Um, if Natalie were here, I wouldn't even reveal the fact. And now you do realize that uh, this is, uh, you know, Natalie could, I don't think she will, but she could view the stream later on. Um, I think if she comes into chat, it probably doesn't have the last few lines of chat, but very easy to find out that, you know, Natalie could find out this is true. She might have actually snuck in and not said anything. We don't know. I haven't checked the list of people in the stream. She might be here quietly. But you're right. the the, ar the argument would be uh, the argument that I use, uh, the, you know, is that um, number one, if you're just taking stuff, y it is not your responsibility. And this is the same reason I believe that there shouldn't be a law against receiving stolen goods, because again, 
um, you don't know that the person who's selling it to you doesn't own it. I mean, you could, you know, if you're suspicious, maybe, but you can't know for sure. And the same thing with these torrents. You don't know if the person who is giving you this data doesn't, does or doesn't legally have the right to do that. The shrink wrap contracts, I also believe people agree to a lot of stuff they don't know they're agreeing to. Um, for example, I didn't actually know that Comcast had the right to sell my data. They, they, they're choosing not to. But I wasn't aware they even had that right or they even took that right. It's probably in that long, complicated, you know, contract somewhere. But what I would like to see is um, companies actually sit people down or talk to people and explain to them and, you know, make, make it clear that they understand the terms of the contract, maybe even have like a video, I don't, you know, whatever, uh, that shows them saying, yes, I understand this is what would happen. Give them a little quiz saying, you know, can we do this to you? Can you do this? Are you allowed to share this with your friends? And, you know, sort of, sort of actually educate them as to what they're signing. Uh, but that would be bad for companies because I think eventually people would be like, what the fuck are you asking me to agree to? Um, you know, you're going to kill my mom? I mean, geez. I mean, that there, I don't think there are any companies that actually have a kill your mom clause. And technically that would be illegal because your mom would have to agree to that too. Um, but if your mom's there and she agrees, you know, that's not good. Um, but that's the sort of thing I think, unfortunately, I get the feeling people will still accept it, but at least they will be more aware of of how they're being screwed over so that is um that is my rant on how shrink wrap contracts should be ignored um and i think that if you go to a store and you start reading the contract and the guy says don't read it just sign it um that guy or the company i mean what i what he represents is now responsible for the for the enforcement of that contract um again the, none of this is going to happen unless i become king of the world uh, which it turns out you can't even run for because there is no elective post called King of the World. So quite, quite a long road between now and me becoming King of the World and making all this stuff legal. Meanwhile, like the, yeah, again, Robin Hood, of course, has the benefit of being uh, you know, he, he took from the rich and gave to the poor, uh, so he was sort of a transit. When you're pirating, you're taking from the rich, quote-unquote, and giving to yourself. I mean, you may also give to others, but, but because digital goods can be copied, you can't really be seen as being charitable because you are taking for yourself in addition. I mean, I suppose if you were to... It is Pomodoro time. I am going to skip it. Um... I, mean, I suppose you could argue that, uh, you know, that you're giving to others, but again, it, it's, you, you know, if you, maybe if you purely downloaded stuff, gave it to other people, um, the poor could, oh, I see what you're saying, yes, yes, the poor could say that the poor, I think, are blameless in the Robin, Robin Hood is, is not blameless, he's a hood, and he's robbing people, that's why he's called Robin Hood, um, but you're right, the poor could say, unless, you know, and this is where you got to be careful. If, if Robin Hood said, I just stole this from rich people and now I'm going to give it to you, then they can't really deny that they knew that it's stolen stuff. Then, then they are culpable. But if he just says, you know, here's some stuff for you that I acquired in some way, I think the poor people could take it and, you know, say, we, we, we're not going to question where you got it. Or, you know, we assume that if you're giving it to us, that you have the legal right to give it to us. So that, that's my position, that's my official position on um, whatever the hell we were talking about. Uh, and if elected, I promise to figure out where the hell Maxima is. Okay, there it is. So L reduce is fold. Let me see if I can... Um, somewhere there is a... Yeah. Okay, so catamorphism. Jesus fucking Christ. I mean, Mathematica calls it fold, Maxima calls it L-reduce, and someone calls it catamorphosism. I mean, just, just stupid. Uh, do they mean, no, I did not mean that. And Rosetta code might actually be um, where they... Okay. Oh yeah, here it is, Maxima, L-reduce, Mathematica, fold. I, I feel like I've been vindicated even though I c 
kind of just knew that. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have been, there's nothing here that's actually, you know, I'm so smart. It's so that that's what El Rudis really is. Okay. So far, not too bad. Make list. Um, uh, well, no, you can, you can get around this. This is a very, very clever argument. You can believe in property rights and still steal software because normally for non-digital goods, for non-copyable goods, when you steal something, you deprive other people of it, the right to use it. If you steal someone's car, they don't have a car anymore. If you could somehow make a copy of their car, um, it would mean that you got a car for free, but you haven't taken a car from them. Um, and of course, the argument gets gets trickier with companies because you could say, well, you've deprived them of the use of it in the sense that they would get paid for it normally, but you haven't actually taken away their software. You haven't taken away anything from them. You've just um, made a copy of it. So, so there is a difference between property rights, physical property rights, and digital property rights. I mean, if someone came into my house, made a copy, well, that would be a violation of my privacy. But let's say they, they, you know, somehow managed to see my computer and they stole it in the sense that they made an exact replica of it without my data on it because that would be a violation of my privacy, which is different. I'd be kind of annoyed because I paid money for my computer and, and they got it for free. Um, but ultimately, I haven't lost anything. Deprivation. Well, OK, now, th now we're getting into definition, stealing, robbing, burglary, blah, blah, blah. Um, let's see how stealing is defined. I mean, what I'm saying is you could, you could make a moral argument that even if this is considered stealing, it's a different kind of stealing. It is a non, um, it is a stealing that does not take, let's see. But now see this one right here without intending to return it. That is clearly not where this is going. Um, because there's nothing to return. Uh, move somewhere that doesn't imply here. Oh, you know what? I think I think you can make a case that. Um, I mean, I've never thought of it this way, but I, I'm not going to comment on that. I, I, I'm not angry at you because I don't want you to think that I'm angry, but I, I don't really want to talk about that. Um, but apparently here, because um, I mean, you could return. I mean. If you make a copy of a software, make another copy and give it back to them. Um, so I would argue that um, you haven't taken it. And certainly you would need the and without intending to return it. That's not there. That, that part doesn't apply because you, you've never, you know, that you have returned it because they, they've never lost it. So I would argue that... Um, that you are not stealing when you are pirating something. Um, let's take a look at Merriam-Webster. We'll see what they say. To take, again, take the property of another wrongfully is mm, to steal or attempt to steal a base. What? Oh. Without. Hello, Natalie. I'm so glad you came back. You, I'm not angry at you again. Hello, Natalie. Welcome back. I would, was worried I had offended you yesterday with the uh, talk of uh, things that we're not going to talk about. Um, and I, uh, Mogus Ramu said something that I, I kind of hope you missed in the chat. Um, and we're trying to determine whether software piracy is is stealing under the very legal, uh, under the dictionary definition of stealing. Um, uh, see, this is again, this is different now. Intent to keep is different from not intent to return. Because with software, you keep it and you return it. To take away surreptitiously, with this one would definitely be pirating. Um, God damn. To steal a base, okay. Steal someone's thunder. I've never heard the expression steal a march on. And, uh, wow. Okay. So now we are, we are talking about whether or not Milkistramu is a thief. We are speaking with Natalie, who is a wonderful biologist-like person. 
um, who is, that's all I can say about her really. And at some point we were going to be looking at, I was looking at genetic sequences, Natalie was very helpful there. I have now moved on to looking at the data for the uh, COVID-19 virus, and, but really using it as an excuse to, um, to use Maxima. So I'm going to keep an eye on the chat because I want to. But we're also going to go back to learning Maxima. Okay. So make list here is very close to being um, table. Ooh. Uh, member, that's fairly obvious. It's what Mathematica would call element. Ninth, again, I don't know why they do this. Pop, remove, this is very common. Push, put something on the end of a list. Ooh. This is, this is what Mathematica calls take. But this is really nice for us because if we're going to do logarithmic analysis, we do need to get rid of these zeros. Um, so that is, that is going to be important to us. Um, so that one we might end up using. Reverse, reduce. Uh, let's see. Reduce is like reverse. Oh, R reduce, right. Right reduce, which is reverse fold. It's basically reverse, fold, reverse in Mathematica. Uh, second, seventh, uh, sixth. Why are they doing this? This is bullshit. Sort. Okay, that's a fairly standard function. Um, I don't think we're going to find a function that gives us differences, but we will should be able to... Ooh, sublist. This is another useful function because we might want a sublist um, for everything that is not zero in our original list. Subset. Okay, and this r returns the sublist. This returns the numbers of the elements, the positions of the elements, and I think this would be not order, but there, there's a Mathematica name for this one as well. Uh, tenth, third, god damn it. Tree reduce. Um, I think tree reduce is what uh, Mathematica calls fold all or fold list. You continue, and maybe not. Um, okay, maybe not, but it's basically, it's like reduce but you apply it multiple times. Unique gets rid of duplicates, which is, w could be useful here. X reduce. Um, let's see. X reduce might be what Mathematica calls apply. Okay. Um, okay. We're not too worried about um, lists right efficiency right now. If we were. Um, we could use arrays, but we're not. Okay, so now, oh, so now we're getting to, wait, where the hell were we? Functions and variables for lists. Uh, I guess now functions and variables for arrays, which I'm hoping will be very similar. Um, array info, oh, now that could be interesting, because over here I did define a color array, but if I do this, um, it doesn't tell me anything, but maybe array info color will tell me something. <whistles> nice. Hashed one cherry lemon lime lemon. Oy vey. This is because I've managed to somehow define this array so that this is... Um, really? Okay, hang on. This should be yellow. Okay, now I'm... Oh, sorry. With arrays, you actually do have to use the bracket. So this is somehow... And if someone understands this in chat, let me know. This is yellow. Oh, wait. But this is pink. They're apparently different to uh, Maxima. These two expressions are different. I'm kind of wondering what this is, but that... That one... Okay, so the quotes have to come to an end. Yeah. Okay. So array info, that's good. That was a good one. I need that one. Uh, list array. Okay. Okay, so list array, apparently if I had some sort of declaration like... Um, this I don't think is going to make a difference here, but if I had like a, a functional definition... Red, pink, oh. 
So that uh, th those are the values. And I guess array info gives me the keys and a little bit more information. So now if I do array info on f, which is actually a function, um, okay, I don't know what the hell that means. But if I do list array, it'll tell you that the function, this is a function, not a, this is defined for everything. Nope, didn't tell me that either. Okay, so f is defined to be f of x plus 15, but maybe, maybe I did it wrong. Oh shit, I didn't mean to do that. So I wonder if there's something called f info. Uh, no. So, so f is basically currently defined to be uh, plus 15. So f of 6 will be 21. So if I say list array, maybe it's a memoizing function that it only defines it as needed. So list array f, not what I meant, uh, just tells you the values that I've put, the inputs that I've put in so far, and array, whatever the hell it was, info, just tells me the values, the, the inputs that I've put in so far. So 4 is 19, 5 is 26, so yeah, all that. Um, f, f, yes, Natalie, f. Um, Okay, so I need to look more into that. Maybe I uh, conf maybe I've accidentally created an array where I meant to create a function, but okay. Uh, lots of stuff on array info that I don't know if I should be skipping all of this. Um, and I think what I ended up creating was a memoizing function, not an actual function function. Um, so let me try something here. If I do this, is this a regular function? So. Aha! And now if I do array info g, it should tell me nothing because g isn't an array. There we go. So g is actually a function. So what does question mark g do? Nothing. Question mark g. Nope, 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 nope. Didn't mean to do that. So um, g, semicolon. So g was so it won't tell me that g is a function, but nope. What, will, what does this do? Nope. Yeah. So g is a function, but I don't know how to get to it. It's not an array now, because uh, so arrays and functions are different. Um, how did you find Twitch, and what made you decide to start streaming on Twitch? And s between those is f and t. I found Twitch many years ago. I was a young man. I was traveling through the woods, not looking for any trouble or anything. I had my trusty axe and uh, was cutting down trees, as I was, in fact, a lumberjack. Uh, and I was okay. Uh, and so while I was cutting down a tree, uh, a small rabbit came up to me, and, uh, you know, as they do, the rabbit said, Hello, I am not the Vorpal Bunny, so you don't have to fear me. Um, but there is a, a video streaming platform called Twitch. And I was wondering if you would like... Technically, you ask on which. So, so this is... We can add a which to this story. And I said, well, you know, what, what is video, what is streaming, and what is a platform? Because I was not aware of these things at the time as I wandered through the woods. So the rabbit said, I will take you to a great witch who will show you a great magic. And the great magic will impress you so much that you will give up your job lumberjacking, and instead you will, you will stream on Twitch. And I said, once again, I am enjoying the lumberjacking job, and I do get some money out of it. And it is also useful to build cabins and other things that one may build with wood. However... I am curious, and since I have done enough lumberjacking for the day, I shall join you, the rabbit, in this quest to see the witch. So the two of us went and saw the witch. The witch said, eh, <laughs> I'm an evil witch. That was an Irish wish, apparently. <laughs> so you want to know about Twitch, do you? <laughs> And I said, no, I do not wish to know about Twitch. It is, in fact, the rabbit who has taken me here, and I have just a vague curiosity about Twitch. Are you willing to sell your soul? Shut up. This, the witch is the one who talks like a witch. Oh, you're so funny. The rabbit doesn't talk. I'm not doing the rabbit's voice. I'm doing the wood. I'm doing my voice and the witch's voice. Are you willing to sell your soul for this information? No, I said. Once again, as I must. Um, this this story might be pretend. Um, no, I said. For as I've explained. 
Okay, I think I think you're mocking me now. For as I've explained before, I am only vaguely interested in this witch or twitch thing that you have, or tea witch, whatever it is, and not interested enough to indeed sell my soul. Or if I were more interested, I still probably would not sell my soul because I am a simple man who believes souls are important, and as a lumberjack, I believe my soul will one day be taken to what I call heaven, and what other people call also heaven, because I live in a small town where everyone speaks the same language. And when I say town, I mean a village, because towns have not really yet been developed, but they will be in the future. As villages get bigger and bigger, they will have multiple sections, and some people will say, for example, this is the Irish section of the town, and this is the non-Irish section of the town. However, we have not yet... However, I've lost my accent, hang on. However, we have not yet reached this point, so I am but a simple lumberjack. <laughs> Once I show you the twitch, you will be forever enamored. <laughs> ah, then I must ask you, is the twitch is some sort of woman of some sort, for I am looking to take a wife, and have not yet done so. And though I say that uh, you are somewhat of a fair maiden, um, I would be lying if I were to say that, because you are very ugly as a witch. And I am assuming that at some point in your younger days, you may have been somewhat attractive, but still, I feel that as a woodsman I could do better than what you would have looked like when you were younger. Uh, which is a pretty insulting thing to say to a witch who could curse you. Uh, however, I'm hoping that uh, my boyish good looks and simple nature will keep you from cursing me for this transgression that I have now committed. <laughs> Let me show you to the tea witch. Come over here. <laughs> forsooth. I'm allowed to say that because I am in a time when the word forsooth was still in use. I see here a box, a magical box that is, that is of images. Uh, the the magic box, uh, it, 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 it amuses me. It entertains me, and yet, I feel that one might end up spending so much time with this magic box that they may forget about lumberjacking or, or or millering or m milling, not millering, milling or or growing food or plants, and and the village, were everyone to see this would become a very sad and, and dead place. Therefore, as fascinated as I am, as fascinated as I am, I must say that this is not the kind of... Uh, I, am, I am fascinated and yet worried by this new, what I will call technology, even though the word technology is not yet in use in the time frame that I am attempting to uh, imply in this story. Um, it... And may I say that it is Pomodoro time. I know not what that is, but I've been told that it is Pomodoro time. And yet, I shall ignore it now because this is my early life before I knew about Pomodoro. So we shall ignore that. So these, this box of images, the images are very strange to me. I do not recognize them. For example, what is that? <laughs> I'm getting tired of doing this witch accent. Let me show you something more interesting. You see, by choosing any one of these many, many options, you can see different things on the magic box. <laughs> Let me show you something you might like. Why, that is an attractive young woman. Someone who would make a good wife. But what is she doing? What are those creatures that are next to her? Oh, I recognize those creatures. Those are bugs. We crush them when we mill and farm. And as a lumberjack, I have seen many of them when I cut open a tree. What is she doing with these hideous and foul creatures? She appears to be enjoying them. Why do you show me this witch? Why do you show me a beautiful woman who likes these bugs, as I'm going to call them, because I don't think we've developed a full classification. Oh, yeah, I've lost it. Hello, T-Torp. Welcome to the stream. Um, the sad thing is this is actually more fun than what I was doing. Um, why do you show me these abominations? Uh, these, what I will call insects, although I'm not sure we have yet to, to develop the Linnean classification system. This, this, this attractive woman is playing with them. Um... You asked me the question of how did you find Twitch and what made you decide to start streaming on Twitch. I am answering that question now, but since you are bored, I will stop answering it. Um, 
Yeah, and that, I'm telling you the story of how I was in a wood, simple, and a rabbit came to me, and the rabbit took me to the witch. The witch showed me the twitch. Well, I, I said that it is... It is a tale best told as fiction, but perhaps it is true, or in it you will find a seed of truth. For isn't it said that... that... Uh, truth is beauty, and beauty truth. Therefore, if the story is beautiful, is it not necessarily true? And the answer to that is yes. Um, so do you want me to stop? I guess I'll stop now since I think I've, I've bored everyone. But uh, that I think you can see where that story was going. Uh, that is how I discovered Twitch for the first time. It was very exciting for me. Um, clearly, I, you know, as I got older, and I, I lost the lumberjack accent. And now I'm streaming on Twitch. So... This happened many a score of years ago. I, I like that voice. I need, to, I need to figure out more uses for that voice. Okay. Now we're going to go back to Maxima, the Mathematica-like program. Indeed, it is a fine truth that I used to be a lumberjack. I'm a lumberjack. I was a lumberjack, and I was okay. I work all day, and... Uh, uh, wait, actually, hang on. I did that wrong. I sleep all night, and I, and I work all day. In fact, that is not exactly true. I do not sleep all night, for the night is very long, and most of us need, at our age, about seven to eight hours of sleep. And the light, depending on the time of year, can be anywhere between 10 and 16 or 14 hours of sleep. Um, and indeed, I did not work all day either, for example, because there are only so many trees that need to be chopped down at any given time, and working additionally would be a bad idea because the, the extra wood would go rotten and not come into use. So I, I would lumberjack a certain amount of time in the day, then have some lunch, and, uh, you know, then perhaps enjoy the town. And then now, I... Well, the types of trees I cut down were trees that were made into wood and logs and houses. I do not know their names, for I did not ask them before I cut them down. Say, tree, what name dost thou have before I cut thee down and turn thee into firewood? And I feel that if I had done that and the trees had answered, it would be a mite cruel to have... Okay, this is an Irish accent, I think. It would have been a mite cruel to have cut, cut them down um, ha after having asked them what type of tree they were. And would I have done that with every tree, and they had all answered as to what type they were, indeed, I would feel like quite a murderer and may have to be, uh, stop becoming a lumberjack and start becoming an, a furrier. Uh, because in, with a furrier, you can just... Uh, Oh, I thank you very much. This is this is the Irish accent I had back in the day when before I discovered Twitch, um, and so I did not know the names of these trees. Just as Bob the Furrier, I don't know why his name Bob is not a good name. Hang on, just as Carl the Furrier did not ask of the animals he furred what their name was. For again, he would be sad had he done so, or perhaps not. Carl is kind of a cruel man, and perhaps would have enjoyed knowing the names of his victims. Um, so, I sense that I am boring thee, and shall return to what this magical thing that is now called Maxima, on what is called a computer, which I did not know none of at the time of this story. So I shall now continue with Maxima, unless uh, there are more questions about how I discovered Twitch, and there do not appear to be. Okay. So this gives me information about arrays, and we've just discovered there's a difference between arrays and functions. Um, and fu so, so <coughs> arrays can act as functions, and Mathematica has the same general concept of arrays acting like functions. Okay, array make will let you make... Um, um, fun make. Fun make, I'm guessing, is function make, not n make some fun. Um, okay, rice porridge now, now we're, we're, only I'm allowed to do the, uh, 18th century references here. Uh, rice porridge, uh, there we go, much better, video game. And by the way, uh, if you do want to see Natalie's stream, I will not be offended. Uh, my, my, uh, general, my general belief is every stream is better than mine, and honestly, if you want to go watch Natalie's stream while there's nothing showing but a blank screen, still better than what you're getting here. This is, this is that kind of content. Okay, oh, th that's actually nice to have a list of arrays that have been allocated. Um, cool, whoa. 
Oh, hang on. Is it just a raise? <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, cool. It's just a variable. It's a reserve variable that says the list of arrays that have been allocated. What is... I forgot what ARR was. Tell me something about this. Complete 1-4. Um, it's not very helpful. That's very dark. Okay, that wasn't actually helpful. What the hell do I have in my array? Um, I think it's only four elements, so if I do array five, I'm going to get an error message. Yeah. This is not cool. Um, oh, I'm sorry, list array. Yeah, okay. Apparently, I have a bunch of number signs in it. I think this actually means it's five null elements. Um... You can stream while you're in somebody else's chat. Um, I, I think I have... Um, I don't think I have any filter set in, so yeah, go ahead. Send Natalie. A, you know, do whatever the hell you want. I don't think, them, I don't think uh, my nightbot will block it. But if it does, let me know and we'll, I can do something about that. Um, allocate more rhyme to... Ma I wonder what that link is about. I, it's kind of hard to tell from the title. All right, so arrays tells me that what's been uh, array set apply. Whoa. Okay. Fill array. So I guess I could turn my list into an array if I wanted to, but I don't want to. Uh, list array, which we talked about earlier. Make array. Creates an n-dimensional array, which is pretty cool. You can create an uh, you can create an array of. Um, see, I still don't know why they need. Oh, so the first value is actually the um, the type, like fixed numbers, uh, floating numbers, any, which means I guess the array can have anything in it. Rearray changes the dimensions of an array. Rem array. Oh, cool! Wipes out the array and get, gives you back your memory. Subvar. Okay, subvar p. Uh, you know, it's a little suspicious, but whatever. Yeah, I know, I know what Minecraft is, to be honest. Um, um, so if you're interested in other people's streams, that's what they're talking about here, uh, and you should go watch them or whatever. Um, meanwhile, um, you know, I have played a little bit of Minecraft. I want to get better at it. Uh, I have a lot of questions about it, and someone tried to help me play it while I was on on stream I'm more interested in the uh, I guess the god version of Minecraft um, well actually there's a free version of Minecraft um, and I'm more interested in trying to create a Minecraft world that looks like the real world because as you know my one of my big things is can I replicate the real world inside of a video game um, so I sort of wanted to create a Minecraft where the biomes or whatever match the biomes in real life uh, maybe even the buildings match the buildings in real life and then you could walk through um, the real world without actually having to go outside because for me the reason I don't go outside is because I hate the outside. Um, no, actually I like the I like the sort of uh, pixelated graphics of Minecraft. I'm okay with that part. I just want to have it represent you know real streets, real buildings, real biomes. Um, you know I've heard people have done that um, to like very small areas of the world. Um, using, um, for example, uh, OpenStreetMap, which is what I would use to do it as well. Um, so th there might be there might be someone who's already done this, but again, I want to use not use Minecraft because it is commercial software, which I hate. Um, but there are there are clones of it called I think Xmine, unless that's Minesweeper. But there there are clones of it, and I played clones of it, um, right? But I want someone who's done it in sort of an open source way. Uh, I don't know if Minecraft maps will work on this open source version of open source version of Minecraft, but that would be kind of what I'm looking for. Um, so again, they might it might work, and like I said, I've sort of looked into that, and I'm and there is part of me kind of likes learning stuff like this. So I would love to see how you manipulate a Minecraft map. Um, 
even a you know even a Minecraft map that's in a uh, open source version of Minecraft, um, there should you should be able to to do Minecraft in JavaScript because all you're doing is you're rendering a world, and you could have a server that you contact that tells you what the world looks like, and then render it in you know in in three dimensional blocks in voxels I guess they're called uh, instead of pixels. Um, or voxels, I guess voxels. I don't know what that means now, but anyway. Um, so that would be a cool thing to do. I definitely am into the concept of Minecraft and creating three-dimensional worlds um, that don't even have to be high resolution. They just sort of have to be representational of reality. Uh, that is a project I've temporarily put on hold to deal with my good friend, this guy, um, who appears to be a gray ball with orange red and yellow dots on him. So I don't really know what this is. Um, and to learn Maxima, which seems like it has a lot of power, although I don't know if it has enough power for what I need it to do. But I'm working on that. Okay. So I don't know what the hell this means. I don't know what that means. Structures. Okay, structures are apparently um, more complicated than arrays or, um, or uh, lists. Or, let's see what they are. They, I mean, or hashes. So, this is something that I think Mathematica does not have. I think this is going to be like object oriented programming. Uh, I am actually not doing that. That would be a cool thing to do, actually, to see how the coronavirus, uh, see what its base pairs are. And now, some people are trying to defeat the coronavirus, which I think is, you know, typical. Everyone's doing it. But I think if we could figure out the base pair structure of coronavirus and, and, could we make it more powerful? Could we create COVID-20, you know, return of the COVID, you know, uh, and not just COVID-19, which, which it looks like they're getting pretty close to getting rid of anyway. So, you know, I want to I create the COVID-20. I want to create the more dangerous, more infectious model. Uh, yes, you're correct. We actually do. If you go to the, uh, the uh, whatever the site is that has all that uh, d info on, on, vir on uh, base pair sequences. We probably do have the base pair sequence of Corona. It's, it's a pretty big virus. Um, so we do have the base pair sequence. Now the one problem is, which I mentioned on yesterday's stream or whatever, and I'll mention it again here because I don't want to waste your time. We know how base pairs uh, get become codons. We know how codons become amino acids. We know how amino acids become proteins. But for some reason we don't know how proteins become organs, organelles, cells, whatever the hell it is, that seems to be a hard problem, and I don't understand fully why that is the case, that we can't just go from proteins to whatever the next step is in that development, but I've been assured by people like Natalie, who actually do this sort of thing, that it's difficult. Yeah, I, Natalie is sort of an expert on this. Uh, it's called protein folding, and it's a big deal problem. It takes a lot of supercomputers to do it. Uh, okay, she doesn't do it, but she talks about it. And there's this whole protein folding at home thing. Apparently, it's a big freaking pain in the ass to convert proteins, even theoretically, into organs. Um, and the same is apparently true of neural networks. I mean, simple neural networks are easy to, uh, are, well, see, that's the problem. There shouldn't be. There should be a deterministic process, right? We have base pairs, deterministic. We, we could get a bunch of those. Codons, deterministic. Um, Amino acids from codons, deterministic. Proteins from amino acids, deterministic. So why is it that the next step, protein to protein folding, can't be deterministic? And I would look, I'd like you to look into that, Natalie, and, and get an answer on that. Um, yeah, I mean, th th you can do protein folding. Uh, they, you know, they do it on computers, and there's this whole pro folding at home project where they ask people to use their home computers unused power on un your CPU to do this. So there's a way to do it. But the, qu the question is, for me is, why is this next step, com you know, combining proteins into other crap, so much more difficult than the steps that come before it? And also, why is the brain such a complicated neural network that we can't, um, we can't replicate it? Uh, the neural networks we created have very many fewer nodes than the human brain does. So that is, that is uh, annoying. I, I don't understand why computers, which are so much faster than human beings at calculation, are, are struggling in these two areas, whereas nature can do that really quickly. Um, 
Also, I want to look into the uh, reverse problem, which is, could we take advanced problems and feed them into someone's... Um, I don't know. I mean, codons are very simple uh, to get into becoming amino acids. There, there's a there's a very type there's a very easy pattern that goes from base pairs to codons, to amino acids to proteins. It there, I don't see that there's a real increase in complexity there. But maybe there is. But I mean that all can happen very quickly. But somehow proteins to the next step is hard. And now of course the reverse problem here would be to take a problem that requires a neural net, um, and feed it into someone's brain and have their brain do something actually useful instead of whatever it is the brain does most of the time. And the same thing with proteins is could we take difficult computer science problems and um, phrase them in the, in, in the protein folding pattern and then actually you know, have proteins do what they do to give us answers. So th it goes both ways. Protein folding is a difficult problem, but can we map difficult problems back to protein folding? I don't know. I haven't done it yet. Can we take difficult neural network problems and feed them into a living brain and, and compute the answers? Again, that is, that is not something I know how to do yet, but I'm working on it. So, so that's interesting. Um, okay, so now we're going to look at structures in Maxima, which I do not think we're going to use. These look like structures in C, and this is something Mathematica does not have. Um, I believe this is going to be like methods... And, uh, and this looks very much like C, in fact. Method, this is going to be object-oriented programming, basically. Um, so fortunately, we're going to just sort of skip through that. Expressions, of course, are expressions. They're mathematical expressions that you can do things with. Um, so let's take a look at some inspections. Okay. Most things in Maxima are expressions, also true of Mathematica. Uh, now, this is a very strange way to define things. X colon 3 dollar sign. And then, this is still input. X goes to X plus 1. X goes to X squared. Um, I don't understand this example. Uh, this looks pretty simple. If X is greater than 17, then 2 else 4. X is not greater than 17, so it's 4. What does this do? X three dollar sign. Um, okay, this is true. Several codons actually do code for the same amino acid. Um, um, okay, so let's take a look at this here. Um, we are going to ignore Pomodoro because there are actual people in the chat. Um, there are more than one ways to, uh, yes, that is okay. Amino chains. Oh, I see what you're saying. So you're saying that if you have a bunch of amino acids, sorry, a bunch of proteins, um, there are so many different uh, combinations of proteins. It's like n factorial, the number of ways, the number of proteins, the number of ways you can arrange proteins is um, is very difficult, is very large, and so basically for each protein chain, you have to figure out a bunch. You have to look at the protein chain, look at a bunch of stuffs in it, stuffs, a bunch of stuff in it, and use that stuff to decide um, what's going to end up happening. Um, see now, I would think and this is maybe where I'm very wrong, that certain sequences of protein would occur over and over again. Um, you would think that, you know, uh, base pair, whatever it is, you've got these bunch of proteins, but I mean, you would think that certain sequences of proteins would occur over and over again, and you would just kind of memorize how to, what to do with them, instead of having to recompute them every time. If I'm understanding what you're saying correctly, that's not true. Each protein chain... Um, there can be lots of different protein chains and you can't just sort of go one, you know, you can't just go like three proteins at a time like you do with base pairs. You have to look at the whole thing to figure out what it's going to end up becoming. And apparently I'm guessing, so these proteins chains may not just be like a few proteins and like they may be 
thousands of proteins in length, and you might have that. Looking at that might require looking at the whole protein, not just little bits of the protein at once. It's not a um, uh, I want to say homomorphic, but that's not the right word. It's not a problem that can be broken down into pieces of the protein. The, you, know, you can't take like 10 proteins at a time because whatever happens to those 10 proteins may depend on a protein much later in the stream. Um, but it still seems like once you've gotten a few of the basic sequences down, um, you should have whatever the hell it is proteins turn into. Also, um, even though it's only been an hour and a half, I think, let me check, I am starting to become hypoglycemic, which means that I need to eat sugar. Um, oh, fuck. Uh, okay, okay, right, right, in one end of the protein chain, and in the other end of the protein chain uh, would be the other AA. I see, what right, so you have to evaluate the whole thing as a single chunk, not in pieces. Uh, which would make it more difficult, but I still don't think it would be that difficult unless my understanding of the length is incorrect and there are like millions of proteins in a given chain. Uh, actually, I don't need to take a walk. What I need to do is the opposite. I need to, uh, well, I need to, I was going to say I need to take my blood sugar, but I, I don't need to, don't know that. I am definitely hypoglycemic, but I want to take my blood sugar just to see how hypoglycemic it, I am and then eat some food. So thank you for watching the stream, everyone. I will maybe come back later today. Um, we will maybe continue with Maxima, we will maybe continue with my life origin story, we'll maybe continue with base pairs, or we may continue with something totally different. You never know on this stream. So thank you for watching, and goodbye for now.